But what the spirit does is he actually changes your nature to where you were a, you were a slave to sin, but now you're a slave to righteousness. The Holy Spirit is this comforter. And I mean, if when I don't know what to do, I'll ask for wisdom. I'd like to ask you about a subject I know you know lots about, and that is the, the triune nature of God, meaning that we call, in, in Christian theology, we refer to God as a trinity. In uh, the book of Genesis, in the creation account, we read God saying things like, let us make man in our image. And you go, wait a minute, there's only one God. Why is he using the plural there of, of our image and us? making things. Mm -hmm. Is that where we get the idea of a trinity? And why three, not two or four? Where do we come up with the idea of three persons in one God? Oh, gosh. It is, I mean, it's a collection of so many of these passages where, you know, even when Jesus is explaining, I've been looking at John uh, chapters 13 to 17, you know, that, that final discourse he has with his disciples before he dies. And he, he explains these truths to them that, that must have been so mind-blowing because he's talking about his father and, and, and the disciples are saying, well, well, can I see him? Can we see him? And that, that'll be enough. And Jesus, you know, says to, uh, to Philip, is it Philip or Thomas? He, he, I think it's Philip. He says, look, how long have you known me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he goes on and he just begins to explain how he and the Father are one. Yeah. And it's it's not just we're, we're so close to each other that we call ourselves. No, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he, he really starts his gospel, you know, with saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God from the beginning. And just, just that sentence, you go, wait. So was he with God or was he God? Because it says both. Right. And it's like, yes. And how do we explain that? I don't know. And then he goes on and explains, and I'm going to give you another counselor. And, 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 and it, it's, you, you read Colossians, you read, it's, it's, it's really reading through the Old Testament over and over and over and going, okay, I'm, I'm confused because it's referring to the spirit, but then it calls him God. It's referring to Jesus and the Father and, <laughs> and making them one. And so you just have to, you know, the, the idea of that word Trinity, you no, know, you won't find that word in the scriptures, but you just get this mysterious concept of, like you said, from creation that somehow God exists as Father, Son, and Spirit, and there's a lot we don't understand about that. And is the Holy Spirit for unbelievers or for believers? And by that, I mean, mm. what is the role of the Holy Spirit in drawing an unbeliever to salvation, and what's his role in sanctifying the follower of Jesus? Yeah, it's, he is for both because he says in John 16, 8, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin mm. and righteousness and judgment. And that's when Jesus, right after he says, to your advantage, because when he comes, he's going to convict the world. So there's something, but the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And so there's something about if we would walk in the power of the Spirit and he is put on display through our unity, like the scripture says, when we can strive side by side, um, you know, for the gospel, um, not afraid of anything. It's like the people will get convicted. They'll know of our salvation and of their destruction. That's the Spirit's job. Um, but the Bible also says in Romans, he talks about the spirit when he enters into you, like he he makes you a slave to what is right. Um, so so he changes who you are uh, in the sense of um, I think of Second Peter 2, when he talks about, you, you know, like a dog returning to his vomit or a pig going back to the mud, because that's their nature. You can wash off a pig and it'll run back to the mud. But what the spirit does is he actually changes your nature to where you were, a, you were a slave to sin, 
but now you're a slave to righteousness. Mm. So once a spirit enters you, now you go and you get your feet a little muddy and you're like, I don't like this anymore. I'm not at peace because I'm not a pig. The spirit changed me and I don't like the mud. I'm a slave to what is right. Doesn't mean I'm not tempted in my old life, but once we start dabbling in it, and some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, there's no peace because you're going, this is not who I want to be. This is not who I want to be anymore. That's who I used to be. And I used to love it and crave it and be okay with it. Um, but now the spirit has entered into me and he's made me a slave to what is right. I have discovered, this is kind of funny, but being brought up as a Baptist, we loved Jesus. We loved the Father, and we weren't quite sure about the Holy Spirit. We, were, right. we knew he was part of the Trinity, and we were very grateful. <laughs> then I was in seminary in London, and I went to a more charismatic church where the Holy Spirit had been given the front seat. And so that was a new experience for me. But at this season in my life, the fatherhood of God, I mean, from five on, I never had a father. And the fatherhood of knowing that I, I have someone who always has my back. Someone, I mean, sometimes this will sound daft, but my husband's not with me and I'm going to something and I have to put on something nice. I'll literally stand in front of the mother and say, what do you think, Father? And I feel this smile on me. And Jesus, I, I love Jesus more now than I've ever done at any point in my life. I mean, what a savior. But the Holy Spirit is this comforter. And I mean, when I don't know what to do, I'll ask for wisdom. Yeah. You know, I'm walking out of a, a coffee shop and I see a woman sitting on the side of the road and I'm like, what should I do? And sometimes I feel the Holy Spirit say, sit down and talk. And I've done that. And other times, no, just move. But it's just this, the glory of the Trinity. And I think that's what, what, what God wants from our prayers is not just sayings by rote, but a real pouring out of our heart yeah. to him. And then us being able to, to uh, download mm -hmm. the, the grace, the compassion, the strength, the, the guidance and discernment of the Father and, and of the Son and yeah. of the Holy Spirit. And I love that you're talking to us about the Trinity. Uh, it made me think of my wife. I knew her as my girlfriend, but when I saw her as the mother of my children, yeah. there was a whole different aspect. Yeah. I never knew, how could I? Yeah. When I saw her that way, I thought, wow, there's so much more treasure here than I even Absolutely. understood. And if I understand the fatherhood of God, but I don't understand the Holy Spirit yeah. of God, then I'm missing out on something. So much. Sheila, Sometimes we think of prayer as uh, reciting a list of things that we're really hoping that God will do or at least consider, but you talk about prayer being a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. How do I listen to someone when I can't hear a voice like I'm hearing yours right now? Yeah. And sometimes I've, I've, I'll be honest, I've been down on my knees and saying, God, just send me a text. Here's my number. <laughs> just an, right, or, or, or just, just, how do you have a two-way conversation when you feel like you're not hearing anything? One of the great ways that I start, and I've done this, I started it during the pandemic because I found myself kind of spiraling again during the pandemic with depression. And I read something by Athanasius who, was, who wrote in the fourth century. And he said, whereas most of scripture speaks to us, the Psalms speak for us. So every mm. morning I read three Psalms out loud. I go out onto my balcony and I read three Psalms out loud because it's yes. so good for my ears to hear what my eyes are reading. And you'll yes. find if you're sad, you'll find yourself in the Psalms. If you're rejoicing, you'll find yourself in the Psalms. And then just sit in the beauty of that and allow the Spirit to, to minister to your heart. 